Okay, hi everyone. We are in a supplementary worksheet for chapter 9 on function. In this video, we're going to look at okay, concept number 4, right, which is to determine whether the f inverse exists. Okay, so over here, what we are going to do is we're going to apply the concept of domain restriction to obtain a restricted function use the conditions to check existence of inverse function and to restrict the domain to obtain that inverse function. Okay, so let's take a look at the concept of what's going on here. So f inverse exists if and only if f is a one-to-one -one relation. Okay, so just now we mentioned that for function, right, for f to be a function, right, so f is a function if f is one-to-one -one or a many-to-one relation. Right? So the thing is that if f is many to one, right, you can imagine that, okay, you can imagine that, um, for example, if we take the relationship x square, right, so let's say if I start with one and negative one, and then both of them map to the element one over here, right? So now if I want to consider the reverse, okay, if I want to consider the reverse, so from one, right, if I key into the calculator of the machine, right? which one should it output and then it will have a difficulty already okay so the fact that you every input right must have exactly one output is the key essence for f to be a function and when you have a many to one function it works one way but it does not work the reverse way okay and the reverse does not exist because it fails to be a function already because it does not give you exactly one output Right? You don't know which output should it give you. So because of that, uh, we are going to tighten the criteria for f to be a function. So instead of just f is 1 to 1 or many to 1, the restricted one would be a 1 to 1 function. Right? So f inverse exists only if f is 1 to 1. Right? So to determine whether f is 1 to 1, we are going to make use of the horizontal line test. Okay, so what we do is we're going to sketch the graph again. Now, if any horizontal line, um, line, if any horizontal line cuts the graph at most once, then f is one to one, and then f inverse exists. So we need to show that f is one to one, and then we link it to f inverse existing. Okay, so then if it cuts more than once, okay, so sorry, yeah, so cuts. At most once, then f is one to one. Okay, cuts more than once, then f is not one to one, and f inverse does not exist. Okay, let's quickly look at example two to show you what we mean. Okay, so over here, right, we're going to show that f inverse exists, and this is a one to one function, and we're going to use two examples. First example is going to be ln x, right? So this is a graph of ln x over here. So since for every horizontal line, y equals b cuts the graph at most once, then f is 1 to 1 and f inverse exists, okay? So this is the exact phrasing that we're going to use, okay? When we answer this question, when we explain, okay? So to show that f inverse exists, you must show that every horizontal line cuts the graph y equals to fx, okay? So for this one over here, we will let y equals to b. Right, because we want every line, we don't know what's the value of b, so we can just make use of a generic unknown. Okay, and b is a real number to show that it cuts at most once. Okay, now then to show that f inverse does not exist, let us use x squared as an example, and we realize that y equals to one cuts this at two different points over there. Okay, so to show that f, so since y equals to one cuts the graph y equals fx at two points then f is not 1 to 1 and f inverse does not exist. So this is also the standard way of explaining why a function is not uh, does not have a, uh, an inverse. Now, over here, very important, to show that f inverse does not exist, you must find a specific horizontal line. Keyword, a. Uh, not just horizontal line, but which specific horizontal line. So you see over here, we pick y equals to specifically 1. You can pick 2, you can pick 3 and so on, but you just need that one specific line to cut more than one, right? So technically speaking, you can explain using borrowing this and explain here, but um, it will not look that um, elegant mathematically. 
okay so we just need one single counter example to disprove this whole thing okay so now this is how we are going to show that f inverse exists by using the graphical method okay so back over here now uh, we i would like to mention that actually we, there's more than one method to show that f inverse exists or there's more than one method to show that f is one to one okay um so currently what we are bucking on or banking on is actually the graphical method plus horizontal line test there is also the application of differentiation where we just need to show that the function is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing now at the same time there will be another way is the analytical method but this one we normally don't encounter this now we only encounter this in uni but however if you want to show it with number two number three can but make sure you have the correct presentation okay so this is the so most of the time we'll just rely on graphical method to make sense of what's going on however it does not stop you from methods two or methods three okay so this is just some advice that i would like to give you and now let's go to do it now do it yourself too and we're going to analyze these few functions here okay so the first one okay let, it, let me draw all three functions for you and let's see what's going on okay all right so um now we have these three graphs over here now the first one is a uh, fx gx and hx now i want you to take note at something over here now over here these are the domains right of the different um, functions okay so this is domain of f domain of g domain of h okay so let's check domain of f is in between two to six right inclusive that means we have the equal sign over there so if we have the equal sign over there what does this mean is we need to shade these two endpoints over here because we want to include these two endpoints okay okay now um then for g right the domain over here is x strictly less than three so this means that we are going to put a a full circle over here solid circle over here means that we're going to include this point number three uh, e power 16 also right last but not least this is negative two strictly less than x and strictly less than two so this means we won't need to take these two points so we leave a hollow circle for those two end points right so the function you don't have to draw the full function you just need to draw for the function that is for the defined domain don't need to draw the whole thing right we don't need this part okay don't need to draw the whole thing we don't need this part okay now you don't need to draw the whole thing we also don't need this part because it, we just want it to be defined between this range uh, these domains over here okay so let's go on and start to write out the argument that we need to write so first one let us uh, use uh, you can technically use any line okay you can use any line for me i'm just going to use a y equals to three okay to form my um, explanation okay so very quickly let's see how do we write the explanation okay so over here so since right because it cuts through more than once right so since this specific line right cuts the graph of y equals to fx more than once okay so this means that f okay so this means that f inverse is not one to one and because of that F, sorry f is not one to one and then because of that f inverse is uh, has the f inverse does not exist okay all right so for the second one the next graph that i'm going to use is this graph we pass through the two okay so similarly for gx now since the graph or the horizontal line y equals to two cuts the graph of y equals to gx more than once okay and because of this g is not one to one okay and because of this g inverse does not exist okay 
Now, then at the last one over here, now I'm going to draw a random line over here. And you can see that, okay, for this random line y equals k, you can see that it actually cuts at most once, correct? Right, this line, if you, even if you move up and down, it only cuts at most one. So this tells me that the function hx is going to be one to one, okay? So since, okay, so this one, the phrasing is a bit different, huh? So since the graph of y equals to k cuts y equals to hx um, exactly once, Okay, for all real value. Okay, so not say exactly once, uh, so at most once. Okay, so that's the better word to use. Okay, at most once for all real numbers of k. And because of that, h is one to one function. And because h is one to one function, h inverse x exists. Okay, so this is how we write, okay, how we write our explanation, right? So the first one over here is just cuts more than once, right? Then the second one cuts more than once, but the third one, right, is cuts at most one. Okay, so, and then it has to be a generic, a uh, generic y equals to something. Instead of a specific y equals to 2, y equals to 3 over there. Okay, so these are the difference between the one-to-one -one function and non-one-to-one -one function. And does it have an inverse or not? Okay, so with this, we will end the video, right? And we'll see you in the next video to talk about the next concept.